Hi everyone, Rebecca the Frugal Resinista here today. I'm really excited about this video. I've had some requests for it, which is really cool. Thank you guys for requesting and thank you to all my new subscribers. Um, this is going to be the absolute basics of how to make your first resin geode. Um, I have put a list in the description with links to products of everything that I use and um, I, I tried to find the things that were the least expensive so that you guys could do all of this on a budget. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little more in this video than I typically do. So if you know how to do this already, you can skip way ahead to when I'm actually making things. But um, I'm going to go through a few different things as I talk, some of it before I get started. And um, just if you're someone who's a very beginner and you keep watching different videos of resin geodes and you think, man, I really want to do that. I don't know where to start. Hopefully this video will absolutely get you started. So I'm going to talk through a couple things real quick. I'm also going to write some things down um, on the screen as we go through. So feel free to pause whenever you need to or, um, you know, rewind to lists and things that are on here. This whole thing is what I would say you have to have to start making um, a resin geode. Anything else is extra. There's a lot that you can add that's fun and you can watch some of my other videos where I do harder projects to see all the extras I add. But this to me is like this is the basics of what you need. So I'm going to start with a shower curtain. Um, I use a shower curtain because resin that's dry will peel right off of it. So we're going to just lay it down. Um, these are really cheap. I got this one at the dollar store. Now the only thing with it is that um, it's got a tiny bit of uh, not pattern so much as texture to it and um, from from being at the dollar store I, it's really thin and really cheap and so um, I haven't opened this one yet last time I used one that was a little more expensive but was worth it because it was completely smooth and it was thick and it stayed for a long time I don't know what this one's gonna do but um, we'll try that out so I'm gonna lay that down first so that I don't drip onto my table and then um, after I do that I will talk through each of these items as I use them. So we will get started. I am going to start with preparing my canvas. Um, canvases, I, I have a link for you guys in the description um, for a pack of canvases because if you buy them in bulk they're a little cheaper you know individually um, but obviously you don't have to follow that link you can do just one individual if you want but I'm just doing a small 8 by 10 today to give you guys an idea of how this all works. Um, and so I bought this in a pack of 10, all 8x10s, and I believe it was on sale for like $9.99, so um, it was a pretty big sale, so this was about a dollar for this canvas. I'm um, going to put these little thumbtacks in the back. I didn't add this to the list because they're thumbtacks and a lot of people have them just sitting around. But if you don't, obviously purchase, purchase some of those, these long ones that... Um, that will hold your canvas off of your tabletop. Now resin, for um, those of you who don't know much about resin yet, what resin does is um, you mix a part A and a part B together. Part A is the resin itself and part B is a hardener um, that will make the resin stiff eventually. And what you're going to do is um, mix those together and they will get really hard over time, but in the meantime, they get super sticky. So you wanna make sure that you don't have your canvas laying um, right on your surface that you're working on because you will end up with quite a big sticky mess of um, your canvas getting stuck to the surface. Now, even though I'm using this um, shower curtain, it would, it, my resin would fall off and like pool onto it and then I'd have a weird shape around it. So that is why um, that is why you definitely want to stick something underneath to um, hold it up off the table and thumbtacks are the cheapest and easiest choice. I'm going to grab a hammer and then come back to you guys because I do need to um, push these in a little farther. Some of them went in farther than the others and so you have to make sure that they're all in all the way so that it's even so that your surface is level. All right, I've just used a hammer to tap these in. You want to tap slowly and have them go in slowly because you will obviously crack the plastic um, part of your thumbtack if you hit it too hard. So I'm gonna flip it over. And now this is 
off of the tabletop and I'll be able to work with it a little easier. The next thing we're going to use is painter's tape. There are a few ways to do the edges of your paintings. A lot of times people will like their resin to spill over and cover the edges. Because I'm trying to help you guys do your first one on a budget and um, spend as little as, as possible with still getting a really quality product, we're going to tape the edges and not have it spill over because you lose a lot of resin that way. You do end up needing to buy painter's tape, but um, in the long run to me, I, I feel like buying painter's tape isn't nearly as expensive as how much resin you lose if it goes over the edges. And again, it depends on the look you're going for. So if you want to look where it goes over the edges, by all means, skip this step. Um, I buy painter's tape that is going to be wider than my canvas so that um, I can tuck it under the bottom once it's on so that if any makes it through, it's not going to run out the bottom. And also because I want a big lip on my canvas so that I don't accidentally um, spill over the top. And you just want to keep the sides covered all the way in case you drip over the edge. So I'm going to tape this up and then I'll show you a little trick to get it to stick really well. It doesn't use hardly any painter's tape. Um, and I think you buy one roll of painter's tape and it'll last you a really long time. Um, we're going to be using stir sticks to mix our resin and paint. But before we get to them with that, what I like to do is go over the edges and just really push down so that I know that none of my resin is going to leak. So I do that on all four edges and then I'm going to do it as I fold it under onto the bottom as well. technically can skip um, the thumbtack step if you're going to do this in, um, in painter's tape because technically you're not going to have anything leak out. But just in case, I like to do both because thumbtacks don't really cost anything extra. Um, and I just feel better if I know that it's really secure. So this is prepped and ready to go. I am going to talk to you a little bit about resin now because that is a big part of these pieces, obviously. Um, you always want to wear gloves when you handle resin. Um, I'm using brands that you don't have to wear a respirator. It saves on money, but I just feel safer doing it that way. And I'm going to link you guys to a few different brands that I like. Um, if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that my favorite is Stone Coat Countertops Quick Coat. And so that's probably what I will end up using. But there are a couple other great ones out there as well I'll talk about when we get to that point. But um, you don't want it to be on your skin. It's Even if it's the kind that you don't have to wear a respirator for, it's not good to actually touch it. And it's a sticky mess. So I use nitrile exam gloves. Um, you can get these in the uh, like pharmacy section of any major store like a Walmart or something or uh, at an actual pharmacy where you get your medicine. Nitrile, I use um, just because I like the feel of it. It doesn't make my hands as sweaty. But also if you have any kind of allergy to latex, these are great. And um, I don't believe that they powder nitrile gloves. Sometimes they powder latex gloves. So if you do see some that are powdered, make sure you get the kind that are not powdered. So I always start with my gloves. And then um, after that, there's one other thing you need to make sure you have for your resin, and that is a um, blowtorch. Now, when I first heard that, I was thinking a giant blowtorch, and I was like, oh gosh, I can't get one of those. But this is a tiny one. Uh, the brand I like, it's called burns o And um, what I like about it is you can turn it on, but once it's on, if you hit this side button, it'll stay on. So you don't have to hold it on the whole time. You can just click that, and then you can go over your piece. The reason you need one of these is that resin gets bubbles, and if you don't hit it with the heat, the bubbles don't all pop. So hitting it with um, a blowtorch really pops all the bubbles. Some people try to get by with using um, like a hairdryer or something, but the hairdryer will also blow your resin and it will make it go all over the place. So I, I use a burns -O -Matic. I'll link you to that. Um, and then when you buy whatever blowtorch you buy, you also need to buy fuel for it. Um, and so I'm going to show you guys how to do that real quick. This made me nervous at first when I tried it, but it's not bad. There's a hole in the bottom of your blowtorch and you put 
the um, little part here from the fuel into it and push. And that's it. Um, and the only thing they say is to not use this for five minutes because there will be just a tiny bit of this that escapes into the air. And so you don't want to light the air on fire. So that's why I'm showing you to do that now before we actually need it. I have filled my torch and it lasts a long time. I only have to fill it like every three or four projects. So the next thing we're going to talk about is how to actually mix the resin. I buy two kinds of cups. I buy these fun little like solo cups that are shot glass size because these are perfect for um, mixing each of the colors that I want to use um, and so I will line those up and get them ready and I will go ahead and put the colors in each of them and give each of them a stir stick before I mix my resin so I'm going to do that I've picked some super weird colors today um, because I've been trying really hard to get out of my box of always picking the same things so um, I'm going to just <laughs> see what happens. I don't know what the final look is going to be, but we'll try it and see. Um, in terms of paint, you can mix acrylic paint with resin. The thing you want to make sure of is it does not take much paint at all to color your resin. And most people suggest a 1 to 10 ratio, 1 part paint to 10 parts resin. Um, and I've even used a tiny bit less sometimes, but if you start using more than that, what happens is your resin won't cure all the way and it'll either stay sticky or it'll stay kind of flexible and it won't harden all the way. Um, I don't use expensive brands of paint. Apple Barrel, um, I'm using three Apple Barrel colors today. Those are all um, a brand that you can get online or like Walmart carries them. Um, and they're typically around anywhere from a dollar to a dollar fifty each. Um, and so these are not expensive. Um, this one was a little more, I think this was two fifty because it's such a big one, but I use a lot of white and I mix it with other colors. So I always get a bigger white and a bigger black. Um, and then I'm also using uh, Ameri Americana brand um, Deco Art. Um, this is another one. I got this one at Michael's for 99 cents. And then I'm using a Craftsmart that's another Michaels um, find. So these are all available online, they're available all over. But what I like to do is basically get each of my colors ready. So if you'll notice, I'm pouring like a dime size in there. I'm not doing much. There's one other kind of paint that I'm gonna use for this pour. And um, it's called an enamel paint. These are all acrylic paints, but we're going to use one enamel paint. Um, I like Tester's brand. Tester's is um, a model paint, um, and it's, it's for um, like model airplanes or ships or things like that. And they have a line of metallics. And again, this is one that you can purchase these for, um, I think, $2.50 each or there's now a pack of metallics that has come out. So if you know you're going to make a few of these in the long run, it's nice to buy the whole pack because you'll definitely use them. So um, I don't have a great way to pour these. So I always keep a paper towel handy so that um, I can clean off the edges before I close it. What's cool about enamel paint is that unlike um, the acrylic paint, it will mix in with the resin, but then as the resin dries, a lot of the, the enamel paint floats to the surface and it creates a really beautiful 3D look that you would think would be really expensive to create, but it's just not. It's really, it's really nice and simple. Um, so I like to use that as well. What I'm going to do next, I was just showing you guys, um, so stone coat countertops is my favorite kind. Um, this is their Art Co. and this is really great stuff. I'll link you to all of this. But um, for today, I my favorite that I'll show you is Stone Coat's Quick Coat. Resin takes about 24 hours to cure normally. So when you mix your resin, you will have a ton of time to move it around, work with it, hit it with your blowtorch. The only thing is, um, if you don't have something like this tape dam up 
what can happen is if you're going to let it go over your edges, you'll do this beautiful design. You'll go to bed or go do your day or whatever you're doing. And then you come back and your resin has all run all over the place because it's it takes so long to cure that it just can move all over. So one of the ways you can fix that is by damming this so that if you have one that um, cures really slowly, it's not going to all run off. The other thing you can do is use Quick Coat instead. And Quick Coat, the pros of this are within two hours, it is really hard. Um, the only tricky thing is if it's your first time, you only have about 15 minutes of working time because before it gets really too sticky and tacky to move around. I'm going to use it today because it's my absolute favorite, but um, if you feel like you need to start with having more time, which I, I would kind of suggest if you've never done it before, um, you can get Stone Coat's Art Coat, or if you're wanting to go a little less expensive but still not have to purchase the respirator and um, all of the extra equipment for toxic fumes, there is um, Art Resin is a really good one, and so is... Um, Oh gosh, I can't think of the other one off the top of my head. I, it'll come to me, but um, I'll link you to those. But there's a couple others that are safer to um, be around without having to use a respirator as long as you're not in a really tight and closed space. So um, I'll show you how I do all this. I use two larger cups. Um, sometimes solo cups are good because they have these lines in them and you need an equal part of each resin. Every once in a while, a brand won't do it that way. They'll, they won't be equal parts, but most of them that we use for art are equal parts of the resin and the hardener. Um, it, you don't wanna weigh them, and that's a trick that I did not know for a long time. You don't wanna weigh your resin because, um, for example, with Stone Coat's Quick Coat, the hardener is more dense than the actual resin, and so, um, if you put them at the same weight, you're going to end up with a lot more resin than you're going to end up with hardener. So you want it to measure out correctly. So I, um, I look on the inside at the different lines in my cups. Now this, I will say, I got these at the dollar store. And um, you wouldn't think there's a big difference in cups, but these are actually a little too thin because they really move around. Um, I mean, they're just really easy to squish, even more than regular solo cups. So I'm not really happy with these, so I will go one step up, but because I'm trying to be frugal, I'm using them up first, but they're not ideal to mix in. Um, so there are different charts you can look up online. So these charts show you, based on the size of the canvas you're using, how much resin to use. And that way you don't over pour um, and have extra resin, or you don't make not enough and then have to remix, because that's no fun either. Um, for me, I have a big project that sits off to the side that I've been pouring extra on every time I have extra, and so that helps me out. But the whole idea with being frugal with what you're using, and especially with resin because it's expensive, is that you obviously don't want to have to um, use extra and then be like, oh no, and try to figure out what to do with it. So use the chart, and that'll help you. When I pour these, I get half of a paper towel for each side and after I pour I wipe the edge clean because like I said these are really sticky and messy um, if you don't wipe the edge clean and put the lid back on you eventually end up with like strings of this coming down the outside of your jug and it's just really a mess to hold then every time so I just go like this and I wipe the edge after I um after I pour and I keep a trash can handy right next to me I actually use a five gallon bucket because it's sturdy and if I do spill, re spill resin in it, I can peel it off. Um, so I can see the lines in my cup. I, I lay the cups right next to each other like this so that um, I can eyeball it as closely as possible. But again, having those lines in there is super helpful. So I'm gonna pour this to the same line I poured the other one. And once these two meet each other and begin to mix, the um, 15 minutes working time starts immediately. So I get everything else ready until I have nothing else to do but pour. And then I pour them and mix them together. Each type of resin needs to be mixed for a certain amount of time to make sure that it's mixed completely. And that is an impatient part for me. 
I have trouble with trying to um, stick with that amount of time, but if you don't mix these together absolutely completely, you'll have sticky spots in your resin and it ruins the whole thing. And then you have to either scrap it or um, put a whole new clear coat on top to get rid of the sticky parts. And then that totally ruins the whole trying to save money on your supplies because you have to double your resin. So I'm gonna get stir sticks for all of these and get them ready. And then from there, I will um, start mixing my resin and pour it into each one of these. All right, I'm gonna start pouring. As I'm pouring, I'm gonna talk to you guys about a couple things while I mix real quick here. And then I will speed the video up so that I'm respectful of your time. I appreciate you watching as long as you have. Um, mixing your colors in helps to mix your resin up a little more too, so get it nice and um, evenly dispersed. I am going to start pouring in just a second here. and. One tip for you guys as you start to actually pour these, I start with thicker, chunkier lines because you can go back and add thinner lines if you have leftover resin, and we'll add thinner lines too with um, our acrylic paint pens. But if you do really skinny lines to begin with, if you decide to tip this at all to make them mush together, um, you'll end up losing a lot of that and it gets mushy. The other thing I do is I decide how much I want my lines to run around and like move through things. Today I don't want them to do it too much because I'm making a geode specifically, so I want the lines to be a little more defined. So I'm not going to add all of my glass um, until I have all my resin laid down. If you lay your glass first and then tip, it does really cool effect. It'll make the stuff move around the glass and everything, but you'll, you'll kind of lose the definition of your lines. So um, for today, I'm not gonna do that. I typically just pick a color um, if I'm using only the clear glass and again if you only spend the money on clear glass um, what you can do is lay it down on top of different colors so that um, the colors show through so you can actually get an effect of kind of different glass looks. Um, I also keep some extra clear available in case I discover that I need more of one color. So I have a tiny bit of clear left but um, we're going to speed it up and here we go. One other quick note as I'm doing this that I forgot to share with you. If you're concerned about using too much resin or not having enough for the whole canvas, um, what you can do is pour your colors close to each other, but you don't have to make them connect all the way. See how right here I don't have them touching yet. Um, if you do that, when you tip this, they'll still touch each other. But if you pour them really close together, you'll get a lot of... Um, color concentrated and not as much space, the colors will cover each other up and you might not have enough to cover your whole canvas. So go ahead and leave a little space. You still wanna be able to mix them together when you move it, but um, you don't have to pour them right on top of each other. Alright, my initial pour is done. I am going to heat this with my blowtorch to pop all the bubbles. Um, when I do that, it will also make the resin um, a little more almost like slick and easy to, to move around. So I like to do that before I tip this. But um, heat also makes it cure faster. So there's a good part of that and a bad part of that. Um, even if you do this once, you'll still get some more bubbles. So um, I do it and then I kind of tip things and I do it again. I'm just going to tip enough that um, my resin goes to the edges and this just gives it a little bit more of an organic look than um, having it all just be in the lines you poured. After I do this, there's little bits of resin left in my cups. I'm going to actually go back again and pour more lines, but I'm going to pour little skinny lines on top. Um, you will do that later with your acrylic pens but um, having big lines and then medium lines with what I'm going to pour and then small lines adds more to the effect of how real it looks. You'll see I'm losing my shape a lot to get into these corners. All you have to do is go in reverse um, and bring it back to where it was. 
see it's coming back to where it is and it just has a more just kind of neat organic look to it figure out exactly where you want it and then you can move it to the next spot um, and keep moving it around and then after you do all the tipping if you wait um, to do your smaller lines till after you do all the tipping that'll make it then look more um, clear cut and not so messy is like how I'm getting it all mushed around in here so we will do that I'll speed up my tipping another thing I'll show you real quick there are a couple spots in here that aren't covered but I don't want to tip so far that I lose like this shape right in here because I like what that's doing so you can just take um, so for example I have gold here um, the gold doesn't go all the way to the edge. You can take your popsicle stick and also just move it a little bit. So I'm going to do that in a couple spots real quick, matching the colors so that I don't accidentally um, mush all the wrong colors into the spot. Um, my resin is beginning to get kind of thick here, so I can't do it too much. But um, if you're not using quick coat that dries quickly, you'll have plenty of time to do this. Just remember that your resin will also keep running on its own. So you want to make sure that... Um, if you don't want it to run very far, you make a barrier either with the tape or if you need to, you can make a barrier with um, gluing down your stones to begin with. So let me get the right colors here. We'll speed this up as well. All right, you'll notice with my quick coat, it's already getting tacky and stringy, so I'm not gonna add too much more to it. I'm gonna see if any of these have enough left to do lines, but they might be getting too gooey. Now that I've um, moved all this to where it goes, I'm gonna hit it with the torch one more time because there will be a whole second layer of bubbles that have come up now that um, I had gotten rid of the first ones and now that it's been sitting for a while. So um, you always want to kind of go back and check to make sure that you've gotten all your bubbles popped, but I've also set my tape on fire, so be careful because <laughs> that's not fun to have to blow out. Okay, let me see if there's anything left. There might be a little, but I might have it too gooey. Tiny bit left. I'm going to then find some of my biggest pieces, like this peach has a really big um, part left, so I'm going to add a tiny strip of yellow inside it. And then I'll do that with a few other colors if they're moving enough to do it. One more time with the torch and then I'm going to add a few stones. Now, like I said, with the stones, when you add those, um, you are definitely going to have some of this move around. So I'm going to add mine kind of carefully because I'm actually really happy with um, how this looks right now. I'm trying to pop the last bubbles. After I add the stones, I'll give you guys a close-up so you can see how it looks. Um, I like to add stones wherever my like middle is, so I'm going to put some in here. And then I'm just going to pick a couple spots besides that. But I don't feel like I need much because I think this looks really pretty the way it is. I'm actually really excited about the color. I'm trying to keep stepping out of my box so when you guys go to my videos you don't see all the same color of geode in every video. Um, but this one was way out of my comfort zone. I've never used orange or yellow and it's kind of cool. It looks like um, like rainbow sherbet or like a smoothie or something. <laughs> but I'm happy with how it looks. Alright, so I'm just adding these kind of carefully. I'm not super concerned about exactly where they fall. You'll notice some of them are falling not in the um, in the very middle color. I don't care about that because I feel like in real life geodes aren't you know like symmetric or anything like that symmetrical. Um, so I don't mind if some of them are in kind of weird spots. I just don't want to move the resin around too much so I'm not adding a bunch of it really fast. So I'll speed this up for you guys too so that you don't have to wait around too long and then we'll talk about it when we're done. So if you guys um, can see this um, 
cures so fast that these glass beads are starting to bounce around on this. So I'm not 100% sure that this last layer is going to stick in all the way. See, it's doing it here, but over here, it's kind of sitting on top. Um, I'm going to leave them here and hope that they fall in just enough to, um, to stick in. But it's kind of neat, too, because I'm... They're really shiny looking um, and they're not all falling in where I have to add more, but we'll see. I can also um, at this point actually feel heat coming off of this. Um, this gets really hot and the thicker your resin is, the hotter it gets. So um, now that I've got this all poured and it's poured on kind of thick, it's heating up fast and it's curing really fast. So um, I did take my glove off to do the glass because after I did this part, I felt like I was um, having some trouble getting the glass where I wanted. If you crush your own glass using those um, glass beads I showed you, please leave your glove on because those will have some really sharp edges. Because this is clear vase filler because I didn't feel like crushing my own glass for the video, um, they they tumble it a little bit so the edges are a little more dull so I'm not afraid to... Um, touch it with my bare hands, but absolutely use gloves if you um, have made your own. All right, I'm just going to add a tiny bit more here, and then I'm going to um, give you guys a close-up, and we'll let this cure the rest of the way for like another hour and a half. Um, I say hour and a half. These really aren't completely finished still until 20 hour, 24 hours, just like um, other resin would be. But, I mean, you're able to manipulate and move the quick coat resin much sooner than other resins. So I'll be able to draw on it and everything. I just won't probably take my tape off um, until it's and, until about 24 hours. And then I'll show you guys how I finish the edges. All right. Let me get you guys a close-up real quick here. I love how when you tip these, the colors kind of mush together a little bit um, and you can see already see how my gold in certain spots that line of gold has risen to the surface and it's given um, a really cool 3d look in the gold section I like when some of this is um, more thin lines like that yellow I added broke up and they're really cool and then how some of it gets really mushy together um, I just think it's neat to have that combination of more mushy colors and more straightforward colors and then when we add the lines we'll have really bold lines that um, obviously don't mesh at all. So pretty cool so far. Again there's that gold um, it's floating to the surface and giving a really cool 3D look. So we will let this dry and come back and I will show you guys um, how I draw my lines and give you some tips on that. All right, everybody, um, this has dried for about two hours and I just peeled the tape off and I'm going to show you how I start finishing the edges. Um, real quickly, I save my cups after I've used them because the resin pools back down the bottom and then hardens and becomes a disc. I cut down the edges and I can make pendants out of them. Just a side note. Um, so what I'm going to do real quick here is show you when you peel the tape off, if you've done um, a geode with a border, of like tape or whatever you end up I don't know if I can show you this really well you end up with an edge that kind of actually comes up a little um, and I don't want that so instead of waiting like 24 hours for this to dry I went ahead and um, took the tape off and I have a little straight razor and you got to be real careful with this part but I'm just going to go around and shave off that extra edge and then I can show you how to paint this so we'll do this quick and I'll show you how it goes are going to be rough but they look um, almost like because I'm painting with gold they almost look like a golden nugget how it's rough um, around the edges but it still looks kind of classy so um, what I'm gonna do is paint all the way around these edges um, I even cut 
I didn't cut it evenly. Like some, some parts it's like flat like this. Others I've angled it like this or like this because I want that rough edge to look natural. Like this whole thing is encased in like a natural gold stone. Um, if you guys want something that's more clean and neat, um, the only other thing you could probably do without um, using more products than the ones I'm showing you in this video um, would be to, because there was a lip on this, pour another coat and, um, and then that clear coat would fill up to the line around the edges, but it will take a lot more of your resin. All right, the next thing I'm going to show you guys is how to draw lines onto your um, painting. I have some old acrylic pens that I don't love, um, but I don't want to buy new ones until I've used these up, which I don't know if that's a good idea or not because they're driving me crazy, but um, everyone talks about getting Posca pens, that those are the best kind, so that's what I'm going to try next. But for today, I'm going to just give you a couple tips on how I draw my lines. I could not find any information on how to actually do this when I started. So this is just kind of what I've come up with, but maybe you'll find some other ways that are better. Um, the biggest thing for me is that I try to get it all kind of in one swipe if I can, because if you pick your um, marker up and then you put it back down, it's a lot harder to line your line up. So I'm just going to do a couple of these kind of quick and I'll show you guys um, I'll show you guys how I do it. I'm going to try to do it all in one swipe. And then the other thing is you can double your lines just to add a little bit of um, a pretty look. So let me get my pen ready. Sometimes I'll do it on here for now. Sometimes you got to kind of dab it. Um, I don't know if you can see that dab it just to make sure it's coming out smoothly before you get started. So I'm going to pick a couple spots that are more bare or seem like they need something added and I'm going to add lines. white on this one because um, I have a gold and a silver but I feel like there's enough gold in this and I just like how the white lines turned out um, so I'm gonna stick with that for now the one thing I am gonna do is make sure that I do my signature because you always want to sign your work so I'm going to use my gold just to blend it in I like to make sure that my signature is visible but also that it's not like overbearing and detracts from the picture. So if I did like a white here, it'd be pretty intense. So I'm gonna use my gold and just stick my name on here. All right, I have moved my cover and everything and I am back to my enamel paint that's used for models and um, Going along with this rough edge, I am going to just paint um, paint some color on around here, and it, it turns out really cool. It looks like, like a natural gold um, nugget or something with the rough edges. And again, you can do these all different ways, but I'm just showing you guys how to do an edge without um, using any other products than what I've recommended for you so far. And um, I think it looks pretty cool. I, I got just a cheap brush that I got on clearance and a pack of brushes and so you don't have to you don't have to spend a ton of money on brush, brushes or anything I do like this shape because I feel like this shape um is helpful in getting into spots that I want to make sure I'm getting without doing too much so I'm going to speed this up that dry but this piece is finished I will give you guys a close-up um, of the edges I don't I, I just think they look super cool like this it looks like natural gold stone that's like wrapped up around the edges of this whole thing and I think it gives it such a classy look it just looks really nice and fancy so um 
thank you guys so much for watching. Please, if you have questions, if you're new and you're wanting to try this, um, message me in the comments or find me on my Facebook page um, and Instagram and the Frugal Resinista, both of those. And thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to all my new subscribers. It really means a lot to me that you guys have um, just said so many nice things. So um, thank you very much. And we'll get you some pictures of this to see the finished product.